Hello everyone, my name is Karen Taylor and I'm the Ministry Coordinator at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church based in New Prague, Minnesota. I want to take this time to welcome you to worship. Whether you're joining us for the first time or you're lifelong members, we are so glad that you're here. Well, we've had an exciting week here at Holy Trinity. We did our very first in-person worship outside for since 2020. So it was very exciting. And I want to share with you how you can join us. What you're going to do is you're going to go to holytrinityonline.org and you're going to see this great graphic that says welcome and it's going to talk about all of the precautions we're taking for our outdoor worship. We do want you to, uh, to register. So you're going to find this please register here button. When you click on it, it's going to bring you to our sign up genius. Now this is going to list all of the precautions, including a health screening. Uh, and that's just the general Minnesota Department of Health screening that you've heard about for the last year. You know, have you had any fevers? Uh, have you been in contact with anybody with COVID or have any COVID sy symptoms? If you have any of that, we ask that you continue to worship online. When you see this great sign up, you're gonna find the current date. Now we've added some new things since last week. You will notice there's some volunteer opportunities. Now it takes a lot of work to um, manipulate manipulate this giant sanctuary we have in our parking lot. So we need lots of volunteers. So if you're interested in helping out in the parking lot or hold the welcome signs as people drive in, maybe you want to host, be like the uh, a table host. That's kind of a fun job because you get to help hand out the communion. There's some kids activities that we have available. And it, you just got to, to meet and greet a whole bunch of people that you haven't seen in probably over a year. Uh, and then also there is the spot that you can register for worship. Now, when you make your reservation, we do ask that you indicate where you plan on sitting. This helps us a lot in terms of planning the space. You have three options. You can stay in your car, you can sit right outside your car, or there's kind of a giant open area where we draw circles so that way you can stay um, six feet apart from everybody and you can sit close to the stage. So that's, that's your three options. We had a great turnout. In fact, I put some pictures on our face or on our website. So there's just a few pictures from our very first night. It was a little chilly, but people were great about bringing their blankets and dressing appropriately. And we hope that this continues, uh, the weather continues to be great. Now I have to tell you that if there is some weather that comes in and, and um, prevents us from having worship, we are going to announce that at 2 p.m. on Wednesday afternoon. We're going to put it on our website. We're going to put it on our Facebook page. We'll send out an email through Sign Up Genius. Um, so you should be able to find it. Now, the people who need assistance or don't have any way of getting electronic messages, our office manager, Jamie, will call those people. So that, that's a great way uh, to find out if there's going to be a weather cancellation. But if it's not raining or snowing, plan on that there is going to be worship and it's going to be great. So I also wanted to point out here on our website that we do have the opportunity to purchase some logo clothing. So you can order there. That way when we uh, don't have to wear so many layers out in, during our outdoor worship service, we can all be wearing our Holy Trinity uh, logo wear. Let's jump over to the newsletter. Now, if you're not familiar with how to find our newsletter, you're gonna go up here to welcome, scroll down to newsletter. That'll pop up the screen with about two weeks worth, or two rows, I guess it's about two months worth of newsletters. You're gonna click on the most recent date. So there on the front page of our weekly e-newsletter, HDLC Connections, is a photo from our Wednesday night worship. 402 days, that's how long it had been since we've been together for worship. And Rose Fife did a great, that was my reminder, I only have 30 seconds left. She wrote a great article about the outdoor worship. So you can click here to see more pictures. I wanna give a quick shout out to Frank and Maggie Argo. They are the radio broadcast sponsors for this week. So thank you so much for helping us reach all those radio listeners. For all the great things happening in and around Holy Trinity, check out our website, holytrinityonline.org. Enjoy your day.
Welcome to worship at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church of New Prague, Minnesota. I'm Pastor Ben Hilding. It's good to be with you today. Today we are looking at a story. After Jesus died and rose again, there's this collection of resurrection stories at the end of the Gospels. And today we're looking at one where Jesus walks with a couple people on their road to Emmaus. So I want you today to be thinking about times in your life when you've been walking, you've been on a journey, you've been doing your thing, and you didn't realize it at first, but when you look back, you realize Jesus was walking with you. That's what we're going to be talking about today. So we're going to begin our worship today in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we're going to begin with a, a song, an offering from Jeff Jacobson, a song called Evidence. The song Evidence is perfect for today because we think about the evidence of God in our lives when we open our eyes to God's appearance next to us, whether we realize it or not. Let's sing. And all throughout my history your faithfulness has walked beside me. The winter storms made way for spring. In every season, from where I'm standing, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life. And all promises in fulfillment and all over my life and all over my life help me remember when I'm weak cause fear may come and fear will leave you lead my heart to victory You are my strength, and you always will be. I see the evidence of your goodness in all of my life, in all of my life. I see the promises in fulfillment in all of my life, in all of the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless, all my sin rolled away, because of you, oh Jesus, I see the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless, all my sin rolled away, because of you, oh Jesus, oh of your goodness all over my life all over my life I see your promises in fulfillment and all over my life all over my life yeah I see the evidence of your goodness
Thank you, Jeff. That was beautiful. Let us turn now to the Word of God in Scripture as we hear our Emmaus Walk story for today. A reading from Luke, the 24th chapter. Now on the same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were, were kept on recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you are walking along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopius, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The thing about Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all people, and how she, chief priests and leaders hand him over to confinement of death and cru- and crucified him. But we had hopes that he, that he would be the one to redeem I- Israel. Yes, and beside all, the, all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group outstanded us. They were on at the tomb earlier this morning, and when they did not find a, the, his body there, they came back and told us about what they what they had indeed seen, a vision of an angel who said that he was alive. Some of those were with us went to, to, to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, and they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of a heart to believe all the prophets of, of declared. Was it not necessary that uh, Mesha should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? In the beginning of Moses, all his prophets, and he interpreted to the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if they were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day was nearly over. So he went to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, We are not our hearts burning with it us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us. That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleventh and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they had told what happened on the road, and now he had made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The word of the Lord. Well, grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Today we are looking at the Emmaus story, the walk to Emmaus, where these two people were on their way to this town called Emmaus right after Jesus had died and word was spreading that he had risen again and they were walking and they were talking about these things when all of a sudden a stranger appeared and walked with them and they didn't realize it at first but the stranger was Jesus himself. So today we're talking about this and we're reflecting on how there may have been times in our life When we too were walking somewhere, journeying somewhere, and we didn't realize it at first, but God was walking with us. We typically have an Emmaus Walk service here at Holy Trinity where we have people tell stories of how they look backwards to see God's activity in their lives. And this this year we're going to invite you to think of your own story. What's some time that you've been on a journey? You've been going from one place to the next, and at first you didn't realize it, but Jesus was with you. And when you look back, you can almost see it. Well, I have to admit, when we, when we read resurrection stories like this, 
There's a number of them in the Gospels, and what I love about them is that they are very <laughs> realistic on the human condition. Uh, they don't paint an overly glamorous picture of how humans respond to Jesus' encounters with them. Um, it's not so uh, admirable how, how they respond, but it does make it feel a little bit more relatable to how we might miss the boat when Jesus encounters us too. And I, I tend to read these stories, whether it's right or wrong, with a little bit of humor with it because I can't help but sense the irony. So today our story comes on the heels of an experience where a group of women, and the Bible happens to be very clear about this detail, a group of women visited the tomb and they immediately realized the presence of this messenger, this angel figure, and they listened to this messenger. So the women noticed this, and what we have today is a story that comes after, where a couple of guys are on their journey, and they are going from Jerusalem to Emmaus. It's a seven-mile journey. <laughs> and Jesus begins walking with them. And for seven miles, they didn't realize that they were walking with Jesus. Now, I don't know why the Bible had to point out the gender differences so much <laughs> in this particular Bible passage, but it's bad enough that these guys don't notice Jesus walking with them. They don't take the time to ask who this stranger is or learn about the stranger. They just kept on talking. What's worse, though, is Jesus kind of plays into it. He says, hey, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> and they proceed to mansplain to Jesus the events that had taken place in recent days and explained to him how, you know, the women went to the tomb and we went and looked ourselves and we didn't see anything, but they say that he had risen from the grave. So they're, they keep talking and mansplaining to Jesus about the women noticing the risen Christ. The irony here <laughs> is just too much. They're blind to Jesus, and yet they're kind of uh, questioning the validity of the women's ability to perceive the messenger in their midst. Well, today's Emmaus story is a humbling one for these two guys on the walk to Emmaus, but it's kind of relatable to us humans who sometimes have a habit of talking when we should be listening or explaining when we should be asking <laughs> or maybe we've got the habit of just having our eyes on our destination and not opening our eyes to the way in which God may be right next to us and we just haven't recognized God at first. So today's Emmaus story has five components, and since Emmaus starts with E, we're going to talk about these five E words. Starts with an encounter, moves to an explanation, moves to a time when they eat, and then their eyes are opened, and then there's this, well, since it's the, since it's the fifth one, we'll, we'll have two E's an elusive exit by Jesus. So first, there's this encounter. On the seven mile walk from Jerusalem to Emmaus, these two guys, Cleopas and the others not named, are encountered by Jesus. Now the interesting thing about this walk to Emmaus is Emmaus, we don't quite know why they were going there. Right in the aftermath of 
of the crucifixion and the news of the resurrection, they went to this Emmaus. Why did they go there? It doesn't really tell us why. But here's an interesting quote from Frederick Beekner. He says this, he interprets Emmaus in a way that we may understand. He says, Emmaus is the place we go in order to escape. So a bar, a movie, whatever it is that we throw up our hands and say, okay, this is where I'm going to escape. He says, Emmaus may be a new suit or a new car or smoking more cigarettes than you really want or reading a second-rate novel or even writing one. Emmaus is whatever we do or wherever we go to make ourselves forget <laughs> about what we're going through. So the risen Lord encounters these two on their road to Emmaus, where they're going to escape, where they're going to forget about the stresses that they've been under, this overwhelming experience. Jesus encounters them there in the ordinary places and experiences of their lives. So on this road to Emmaus, they have this encounter. And after the encounter, they don't take time to learn his name. They don't ask who he is. They just keep on talking. They keep explaining what's happened. And this is pretty typical. Uh, they're talking. They're trying to make sense. And they pass on what they think they've made sense. And it's fairly accurate about how they understand the events that unfolded. But they're explaining what's happened to Jesus of Nazareth. They're reflecting on it. They're discerning. They're trying to make sense of it. So after the encounter, there's the explanation of what has just happened. And what's interesting at the next part is after they'd walked these seven miles on the road to Emmaus, the details of the Bible text say that Jesus had intended to keep on going, but they stopped him and they said, why don't you come in to eat with us? And I think that's interesting, that Jesus didn't assume that he would go in and eat. Jesus was intending to keep on going, but it was after an invitation. He didn't force himself on them. After he was invited in, he went in and ate with them. They went to eat together. And this is the part where Jesus doesn't say anything. But his actions speak. Because as they were eating, he blessed the food. The guest becomes the host in a way. He blessed the food, broke it, and their eyes were opened. I want to focus on that eating part just for a second. Have you ever let yourself reflect on the very physiological aspects of these resurrection stories? So when Jesus appears to Thomas, he shows them his hands, has him put his hand in his side. The wounds are seen. The scars are seen. He's touched. A physical body is touched. And in many of the resurrection stories, Jesus eats. He's hungry. Have you ever thought about that? Wait a second. Jesus has been raised from the dead, how can he still be hungry? And folks, I don't have this all figured out, but I think a lot of times we think of spirituality as something out of body experiences. And even the disciples thought they were seeing a ghost, but the resurrection in the Christian faith is an, an embodied experience, even for Jesus. His scars are seen. He's hungry. Jesus is embodied. And so he goes to eat with them. And when he blesses the food and breaks it, their eyes are opened. They realize and recognize that this stranger that was walking with them the whole time, maybe it's the first time they made eye contact, but they realize, wait, this is Jesus, the one we were explaining <laughs> Jesus to. We were telling him about him, and that's him. I mean, can you believe their overwhelming sense of, you know, you got to be kidding me. 
We were just explaining to Jesus about Jesus. Oh, how embarrassing. <laughs> but their eyes were opened and now they knew for themselves that Jesus was raised. The story that the women were telling from the tomb was true. They encountered him and now their eyes were opened to him. And then the story ends with this fifth E, the double E, the elusive exit, because just as soon as their eyes were opened, after eating with Jesus, Jesus disappeared. He left. This is a story of the road to Emmaus. And when we hear a story like this for you and for me, we can't help but think about the times in our life when Jesus comes and meets us on our own roads. And in some ways, this five-fold pattern story that's similar to other resurrection stories in the Gospels of encounter, explanation, eating, eyes open, and an elusive exit, it can kind of follow some of our our patterns of Jesus in our lives as well. Where we too may be walking on our road and Jesus encounters us, Jesus walks alongside us, the footprints are there, he's carrying us, whatever the experience may be, it's not dependent on our ability to recognize it. But Jesus is still there. If the Gospels Resurrection stories like this give us any kind of comfort. It can show us that just because we don't recognize Jesus at first doesn't mean he's not there. These two walked for seven miles with him and they didn't see him. So if you had an experience where you didn't recognize Jesus at first, you're not alone. An encounter. But then there's this process of trying to make sense, trying to explain what's going on in my faith life, and you and I do that together. How do we make sense of this? How do we try to understand and synthesize these things that we know and believe into our experience, and what does that mean for us? But there's something holy, there's something holy about breaking bread, about these embodied, tangible experiences where God reveals God's self to us in the flesh. Not just a ghost or a spirit, but an embodied presence of God that makes us open our eyes and wonder, wait a second, is that God's presence with me? But then comes the elusive exit, because as soon as we want to hold on to that moment, as soon as we say, wait a second, this is God. This is, this is how I understand my faith. The moment fades. And we're moving on to the next part of the story. You know, the Bible commentary I like says this. It's the New Interpreter's Bible commentary. It says this. God's presence is always elusive, fleeting, dancing at the edge of our awareness and perception. If we are honest, we must confess that it's never constant, steady, or predictable. The mystery of transcendence is always transitory. God's faithful perceive God's presence in fleeting moments. And for this reason, we learn to treasure religious experiences in retrospect. We learn to treasure religious experiences in retrospect. So today I invite you to look backward. Look in your life. Where might you have had an encounter with God? An experience where Jesus walked alongside of you. Maybe you were too busy talking to listen. Maybe you were too focused on the future to notice God's presence in your life. 
But as you think back to yourself, this religious experience in retrospect, when have you seen God's presence? When might it have been Jesus walking with you even if you didn't recognize him at first? As Jeff saying in the earlier son, where do you see the evidence of God in your life? Let's pray. Gracious God, we recognize that we many times fail to see you and recognize you. And we join your disciples in, in having realistic human experiences that fall short of your divine glory. But God, you come to us anyway. You appear to us even when we can't see you. And God, you come into our lives when we least expect it on our own walks to Emmaus. As we seek escape, you seek solidarity and accompaniment. So God, I ask that as we worship today, as we gather today, that we can look back at ways in which you've been present with us. Open our eyes to your presence among us. Not just in the spiritual world, but in this embodied world. Open our eyes to where you have met us, whether we realized it at first or not. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let us now gather our first and best in offering to the Lord. Now please join me as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now before our final benediction, a quick announcement. This past Wednesday we had our first in-person outdoor worship service where we practiced physical distancing, wore masks, etc. And I want to say thank you to all of you who joined us for that service. But as we continue with the Wednesday evening at 6 p.m., weekly worship services outside. We'll also continue with these online services premiered on Sunday at 9 a.m. So pick whichever one works for you. It'll be the same service in some ways echoed from Sunday to Wednesday. So uh, whichever one fits for you, if you'd like to get a sneak peek ahead of time of what the service is going to be on Wednesday. You can listen to the sermon early, or if you want a refresher, come Wednesday after worshiping on Sunday. It's going to be different music, uh, but the same sermon. So if you've listened to the sermon a few times by the end of the week, you might be signed up to preach next week. <laughs> but as we go today, we go to share God's love for all people from one generation to the next. So that's our vision as Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. So may God bless us. May he go before us to show us the way, behind us to encourage us, beside us to befriend us, above us watching over us, and within us to give us peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. May we go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.